Hello and welcome to the third video in the Technocamp series on Game Maker Studio. In the last video we created a series of sprites. We have a player character sprite, a house sprite now, a car sprite, and a shop sprite. In this video we'll be creating objects and rooms two very important parts of Game Maker Studio. So let's start with objects. Objects are the interactive parts of Game Maker. They are any piece of the game that interacts with the game itself or other objects, and they are what actually holds the code. Objects have to wear a sprite to be visible, and that sort of explains the relationship between sprites and objects. On its own, a sprite can't do anything. To be interactive, you have to create an object, and you have to have that object to wear the sprite. So let's go ahead and create an object for the player character. I'm going to left click on objects in the asset browser. This is the objects folder. If I right click, select create, and select object, we can go about creating an object. And here we are now with the object window. As with Sprite, we need to give this a good, sensible name. This is going to be my player character again. But to prevent confusion, I use underscore object tacked onto the end so that when I'm working in this game, I know exactly what this is. This is the object for the player character. Below that, we need to make it wear a sprite for an image. So if I look in this sprite subsection, with this dotted three dotted ellipsis, I can click on this and select what sprite it will wear. I would like it to wear the player character sprite. Under here we've got some options like Collision Mask, Visible, Solid, Persistent, Uses Physics. I will explain those later, but for now we don't need to change anything for our player character object. And we have now created our first object of the game. The next video will cover the actual coding aspect of this. For now we're just going to create the objects. So I need one for the moving vehicles in my game plan. I plan to have vehicles that move up and down the screen that can collide with the player. Now, theoretically, I could do both up and down movement with one object, but for simplicity, this is after all the more basic side of the tutorial, I'm going to have two objects, one that goes up and one that goes down. So I'm going to right click on the objects folder again, create and create another object. This is going to be a car that goes up. So I'm going to call it car up obj, obj for object. And it's going to wear the car sprite. So. Select sprites, car sprite. The reason I'm choosing this instead of having one object is technically they have different behaviors. One of the car objects will behave in that it goes up, and the other object will behave differently in that it goes down. So this is going to be the car up object. I can do the same for car down, create object car down object where's the car as a sprite and so on let's quickly add the shop because the shop doesn't require anything special object shop object and it will wear the shop sprite. There we are. 
Okay, next we're going to add the houses. Now in my original game plan, the houses acted as walls. So things that the player couldn't walk through. So this requires a little bit of uh, tweaking the object settings. So to create the obstacle or the house or the wall, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to go back to my objects folder, right click, create object. This will be house object. It will wear the house sprite. But here, I'm going to make a change. Down in the object settings, I'm going to enable solid. Now, what this option does is it makes a, um, a game game object behave more solidly and as you can see when you hover over it it actually tells you what it will do solid instances will automatically be placed back in their previous position when in collision now it's very imperceptible when two objects collide that you see any kind of movement uh, but in case you do solid makes that less of a problem just be aware that it's an option, and that option is best for things like walls. Okay. Next, I'm going to introduce rooms. Now, rooms are essentially the levels of a game. If Even if your game doesn't have levels, you'll still need a room for it. It's the world space. It's where you put all your objects to make a world to navigate. And Game Maker needs at least one room to run. And for that reason, it's created a room view by default. If I look in the Rooms folder and I click the Tree Expander icon, I can see that there is automatically a Room 1 in there. If I wanted to rename that, I could right click Rename, give it something like Level 1, or tutorial area or main menu. It's a good idea to have a room specifically for your main menu. Things like that. But once renaming it, I can double click on it. And this opens the room editor. The room editor is a little different in that it's a full screen tab rather than something that resides in the workspace. Here I've got all the options relating to a room. Here in front of me is the room itself. At the moment, it's got a grid drawn over it. That's just for ease of placing items. Over on the left, we've got several panels. The bottom panel is the properties panel, and this has lots of useful stuff in here, especially width and height. This is the width and height of your room in pixels. And whilst we're working on a very basic game, changing this will change the size of the window it makes on your computer. So if you've got a screen that's 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels tall, and I were to type that same number in here, the game window will be the same size as my screen. But for now, I'm just going to leave it on default because, you know, this kind of thing is adjustable. Here we can now start tweaking some settings to make the room how we want it to. First things first, let's change the background color from black. Now, if I click on the background layer up in the top left, and look underneath, this opens up the background layer properties. The background layer is the sort of visual background, and you can actually load in a sprite to be the background if you wanted to. If you didn't, you can simply change the color with this color bar under here. So if I wanted to, I can make my background white, I can make it purple, all sorts. Let's just go for a uh, grayish blue, not too harsh, uh, enough to see what we're doing. 
Okay, that's all available in the background layer. If I want to start adding objects, I need to switch to the instances layer. Now, objects act like as a t uh, sorry, objects add like a template. Every time you created an object, you are creating a template. What that means is we can have multiple of any object. So, as an example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look over in the Assets Browser in the Objects folder and see my player character. I can drag my player character out and put the player character in the level. At the moment, the player character is too small. That's OK. We'll sort that out in a bit. But dragging that out over on the left, I can see that it's added the player to the instances layer. We now have an instance of the player object. And what that means is I can have multiple player objects and it just adds them as a new instant. But that's more advanced stuff. It's just good to be aware of for now. I'm going to click on the extra player and then press delete. OK, let's finish making this world. What about um, walls? Well, I'd actually say the walls. Yeah, they might be too small as well. So if I drag the, the wall object or the house object out, yeah, I want this kind of at a different scale. So maybe I need to fix something there. Now, I could resize it in the room itself using these drag tools. OK, so maybe I wanted it, maybe not that big, maybe something like that. OK. You may think that's fine, but then I go to bring in another one. Oh, and it's gone back to the small size again. So I need to drag that bigger. If you're doing this all the time, it's going to get very tedious very fast. Uh, can I copy and paste? Let's try. Yeah, I can copy and paste, but still, it's also quite tedious. What I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to edit the sprites for these objects to make these sprites larger. To do that, I'm going to close the level editor. I click and close on the tab up here. I am back in my workspace. And now I can open up the sprites for the player character by looking in the asset browser to the sprite. And remember back to the first video, to resize the sprite, we can click in the size menu, this resize sprite button. And here we can type a new size. So I might bump this up to 128 by 128 pixels. I'm in the scale image option. So when I click apply, it scaled my sprite up. So when I go back to the level, so I go back to the Assets Browser, click Level 1, the sprite is now the sprite is now larger and thus the object is larger. And it now takes up more room in my, in my level. Uh, let's do the same for the wall. So go to the wall sprite or the house sprite, whatever I called it. I'm going to bump this one up to 128 pixels again apply and then go back to the level and now when I drag them in they'll be the right size by default rather than me having to resize them once they're created let's have that one there actually um, trying to place them one by one like this is still rather tedious Luckily, there is an alternative. If you look down here at the bottom, it's telling me that the left mouse button and the right Alt key on the keyboard will paint with a selected resource. So if I click on House and I hold down right Alt, I can begin painting 
and it will draw them much nicer. Oh, let's get the player out of there actually. Uh, so the player is stuck behind a wall. If I select one, I can delete it. There's the player. Let's put the player there. For me, it is right alt. I am on a Mac. It may be different if you're on a Windows computer or something else. So that's just something to be aware of. Let's have it like that, and then maybe one there, and then just one over here for extra decoration. That'll do. It's our first level, we don't want to go crazy. Okay, let's add the cars in. And remember we've got a difference between the car up object and the car down object. I'm going to start with the car up object. Oh, I've double clicked it by mistake and that's taken me back to the workspace. That's not what I wanted. Let's click back on the level 1 tab to bring us back there. For the cars, what I want them to do is I want them to start off screen and then go up and then once they are off screen and no longer used they can uh, jump back to the start or despawn or whatever but I'm gonna drag this out and I'm gonna start them off screen so I'm dragging them outside the level so that's a car up object let's have one a little way behind it and uh, well, let's do a couple of car downs as well. Let's have a car down going down here. And one on the opposite side. There we are, that should be fine. Okay. So we have our level. We should probably see how this looks. And for this, we're going to start testing our game. Now, before we start testing, remember that we haven't actually written a single bit of code. So nothing will happen. But to see that for ourselves, we can look over at this bar at the top where we've got these tools here. We've got a lovely play button or a run button. And if I click that, we can see that this window at the bottom has popped up. This is the output window. Uh, this uh, is detailing how Game Maker is building your game. If there are any errors, they'll probably pop up here in this output window at the bottom. But over on my other screen, let me drag this in, we've got a runnable window that is the game. Nothing happens with it at the moment. Again, we haven't actually added any code. That will be the next video. Okay, so in the meantime, with that all working and us able to test the game, that is it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one where we will be adding some code. Thank you very much and see you there.